This is Easton Jackson again. Today we're going to be reviewing a video that shows the various ways that you can choose ICD-10 codes in eClinical Works. Also different ways that you can convert your ICD-9 codes on your problem list and previous assessments to ICD-10. As I'm sure everyone listening to this is aware, the federal government is requiring the switch on October 1st, which is about nine days from now. I'm going to start with some of the easiest examples and then some of the more problematic ones or some of the uh, particular situations that are going to take special consideration. First of all, in this fake patient, we're back with Logan Wolverine. I'm going to go to the assessment window. Notice that if you have ICD-10 turned on, you should see this checkbox and you need to check it. At least you'll need to check it when you go on October 1st. If you leave it unchecked, it will drop a 9 code and if you submit 9 codes after October 1st, to most insurances, these will get rejected. So in this case, first of all, we'll just search for a new diagnosis. In this case, I'm going to put urinary tract infection, a UTI. I click go like usual and you can see that I have both the ICD-9 and the 10 codes. I have a couple of options here. I can just click uh, the diagnosis like usual and it'll drop the code and you can see it dropped a 10 code there. Also, I'm going to remove it and you should notice that there are some of the codes that are blue. If you click blue, it will open up the ICD-9 to ICD-10 code mapper. So in this case, when I kick it, it gives me a few different codes which could be associated with the UTI. In this case, I'm going to call this a simple acute cystitis with or without hematuria based on my urinalysis result, and it will give me the code. I can select it, and now that one is chosen. Notice this code N30.00 is different than N39. This one is a little bit more specific. Generally speaking, you're going to want to pick the more specific ones in ICD-10 because at some point some of the insurers may stop paying or at least start rejecting uh, the initial submissions with the unspecified codes if a more specific code is available and appropriate. This is somewhat of a problem because a lot of the ICD-9 codes had unspecified and that's all that they had and the code mapper will often map it over to an unspecified one even if a more specific one is appropriate. In the next example I'm going to choose a previous assessment. Notice that the use ICD-9 box now switches to say auto map to ICD-10 and it should be checked as well. I'm going to pick through a few of these problems that are previous assessments but maybe aren't a problem list worthy. For example, I'm going to pick eye pain. So when I click it, the code mapper appears and I can select which one. One of the big changes in ICD-10 is laterality, meaning you need to pick the left or the right or both. There is an option for unspecified eye and there's an option for unspecified in most things like ankle sprains. You can do left or right. I'm going to suggest that <clears throat> Unless your coder tells you otherwise, you should never pick that unspecified one. You can always pick if it's the right eye or the left eye or both eyes that are hurting. So in this case, I'm going to pick the right eye. I hit apply, and now it dropped the code for eye pain, right eye. This is the most specific one. Next, we're going to go to problem list. Again, notice there's the auto map to ICD-10. Make sure that this is selected, assuming that you want to drop ICD-10 codes to your note. And this is this patient's problem list. In this case, here are the previously selected problem list in ICD-9 codes, which you can see right here. First of all, let's go ahead and select hypertension. I click on hypertension and notice the code mapper didn't even come up. This is just a straight mapping one-to-one, 401.9 -one, map straight to I-10. That's an easy one. That's great when you get one of those. Let's do diabetes as well. When I click diabetes, uh, it brings up a couple of codes, type 2 diabetes without complications or unspecified diabetes. That seems like a bad choice. I would always pick type 1 or type 2 unless you really have no idea which one it is. I can click apply and it drops in there. Now, Notice that it only gave me a couple of diabetes choices here. We know that there are a whole lot more diabetes uh, codes out there. Let's try diabetic nephropathy. This one's going to bring us up a few more codes that uh, might be appropriate. Again, we've got the unspecified diabetes and the type 2 diabetes. <clears throat> and we can select 
which one might be most appropriate. So I'm going to select this one, hit apply. Now, one big problem that I've discovered, and I hope this is just for our particular version or our load, and this is going to be collect, uh, uh, corrected soon, but I don't know if that's the case. Let me take the two diabetes codes off for a moment, and we'll go reselect them. In this case, I'm going to select uh, diabetes again. And again, it brings up the code mapper. Let's suppose that I decide, oh, it's neither of those. It needs to be another one. Um, I know there are a lot more diabetes codes, so I don't want to use any of them. So instead of applying it, I'm not going to pick one. I'm just going to hit cancel. Notice what happens. It just dropped the ICD-9 code. Completely inappropriate. I didn't want it to do that. But if I hit cancel, it still drops the 9 code. I don't know why they did that. Um, let's do another bad example. Now I'm going to pick the diabetic nephropathy again. My 9 to 10 code mapper appears and I decide no, it's none of those. But I already know if I hit cancel it's going to drop the 9 code. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click the X, make this thing go away, and then go reselect. Well, once again, if you hit the X or cancel, it will drop the 9 code. Very frustrating. Creates extra work. I'm not sure what the clinical was thinking on this one because it's a, it's a poor design and a poor workflow. So that's one to be aware of. I think, unfortunately, that almost guarantees that uh, some of our physicians are going to inadvertently drop some nine codes into their notes after October 1st, which is going to cause some code problems um, for the claims. Hopefully you've got edits set up so that it doesn't even make it out to your clearinghouse and that your billers can catch it and have your physician uh, correct it. Another problem is this. I'm going to go over to my problem list now for Wolverine, and I'm going to open it up. And these problems you can see with all of the prior problem list entries, we've added notes on a lot of them. For example, on the hypertension, got a strange rash on lisinopril, diabetic nephropathy, seeing Dr. Shah, nephrologist. These are great. These are patient-specific assessment notes, and these are very helpful. Unfortunately, they do not carry over when you do the conversion. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to go to the problem list. I'm set to auto mapped ICD-10. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to take the hypertension off just to re-add it. So when I re-add it, the hypertension, remember, I had a note that said lisinopril caused a rash. When I click it, it converts it over, but there is no note there. It is not carried over, I think, from eClinical's viewpoint. This represents a new diagnosis, even though it's the identical clinical entity to 401.9. So, my notes are still there, however, they don't uh, carry forward to the new one. Also notice that we will most likely have to go through all of our diagnoses, or at least a lot of the common ones, any clinical, and mark them as chronic so that they will automatically add to the problem list. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to add it here. Once I do that, and I close, notice I now have the ICD-10 version of essential hypertension, and I have the ICD-9 version of essential hypertension. Now, that means I still do have my notes from the ICD-9 hypertension, but they didn't carry forward. I'm going to have to copy it from ICD-9 hypertension and paste it into the notes of ICD-10 hypertension, and then I can remove the ICD-9 code. This is going to be very tedious for those who use the notes uh, function extensively. <clears throat> Similarly, for those who use the caret, which is the little yellow triangles which are seen in various places on the note, this also causes a problem. I'm going to hit the caret here, and this lets me see the last couple of notes for which uh, Wolverine was seen. In this case, they were seen on 918 a couple of days ago, diagnosed with diabetes. Notice it was the ICD-9 code, and this note was added. They're doing surprisingly well. Well, I might decide, great, I'm going to carry that forward. If I click diabetes and merge this and bring it forward, notice it brought the note forward and it added diabetes with the nine code. So this is a problem. You can't use the caret to bring forward um, your prior visit uh, diagnoses, at least until you convert them to ICD-10. Instead, what we're recommending, I'm going to remove this, what we're recommending, if you do use the carrots a lot and bring a lot of your notes forward in this manner, you can do part of it. 
So I click here, I might decide, yes, I want to bring this forward. Perhaps I have really extensive notes here, so it really is worth bringing the whole paragraph or the whole list over. I can highlight this, I can copy it. Now, don't hit the copy button or the merge button because that will bring in the ICD-9 code. Instead, I'm actually going to have to cancel it, open up assessment, and then paste it in. Again, this is tedious, but if you do it the other way, you're gonna bring in an ICD-9 code and you're gonna spend more time cleaning up the notes the billers send you and changing them to ICD-10 codes. One other quirk to deal with, and this is in the medical history. So up in the subjective section on this patient, I'm going to open up their medical history. Now, you can go ahead and free text in anything you want in the medical history. That's not really recommended because it's not associated with an ICD-9 code and you can't add it to the problem list. But if it's something bizarre that there isn't a code for it, you might want to put it in there. The better option is to click the little ellipsis button with ICD. Now, notice, this only shows the ICD-9 codes. If I go searching for a new one, let's search for ankle sprain, it will bring me the ICD-9 code for ankle sprain. If I click on it, ICD-9 goes straight over. There is no option whatsoever on this screen to add an ICD-10 code or have the ICD-9-10 to code um, mapper show up. So I'll remove that. If I go to previous assessments, same problem. I can click assessment uh, for diabetes, etc., and they all go over in the 9 code. Same thing with problem list. The one place that you can actually add them and get it to convert to ICD-10 in the medical history is to go from smart search back to classic search. If I go to classic search now, you can see the problem list if you click it. And I'm going to add allergic rhinitis this time. Notice there's the auto map button. Make sure it's checked, at least on October 1st when you need to use these for real. Click allergic rhinitis and it pops up a couple of options. I'm going to select allergic rhinitis unspecified. Again, not the greatest option because unspecified isn't ideal. I'm going to select it and it converts it right here. Let's do the chronic kidney disease as well. Notice this one converted straight over. Unfortunately, this is an unspecified code as well because 585.9 is the unspecified code in ICD-9. The other place in previous assessments, here you can see more of them. We'll go back to our good friend, the iPain. Click on that one and it brings up the list here. Again, pick the correct eye, don't pick unspecified. And when I apply it, then it converts it over. Let's do one more, let's do lead toxicity. And notice this one brings up a lot of options and unfortunately, a lot of them are incorrect because lead toxicity, the first 20 or 30 are lead associated gout, which I don't know that I've ever diagnosed in my life. Finally, we can get down here to some of the other toxic effects of lead, uh, which based on their codes look like uh, injury codes. I'm going to click this and let's, decide, let's for a moment think that um, I look at it and say, I don't like any of these. I'm going to cancel it. And just like we saw elsewhere, canceling still adds the nine code. Similarly, we'll do a cute URI. Maybe that's a bad example, it maps straight over. We'll do UTI which also maps over. Fine, we'll do allergic rhinitis. And I decide, oh, I don't want to cancel because it drops the nine code. I click the X and it drops the nine code again. So that's another issue. Um, it's probably the same programming on the back end. Bear in mind that when the code mapper is open, if you don't want the code and you hit cancel or X, it is going to drop the nine code and you're now gonna have to click in there and remove it. So. Those are a few of the considerations for selecting ICD-9 codes um, and converting them to ICD-10 or converting the existing ones off of your problem list and your previous assessments. As you can see, there are a few bugs or workflow issues in here which hopefully can be minimized if you know about them. Good luck to everyone on October 1st.